So let's talk about GPU mining. So it has been a while I did not talk about GPU mining in my channel. So in this video, let's just sit down and have a random conversation on how's the state of Ethereum or GPU mining right now and what could be the impact or what's my opinion on the upcoming merge and how that's going to change the GPU mining world entirely moving forward. So right now I am in a corner of my office where I put this mining rig. So this is a mining rig that I built for the tutorial video how to build a mining rig. They are being left in this corner of the office because this GPU sometimes is still not that stable and requires some attention. And behind me there is a it's not a mining rig per se, but there are two GPUs that are being, you know, attached on the motherboard just like that. They are rigless, all right? So, just found, you know, this corner and decided to record this video for you guys and talk about cryptocurrency mining, specifically GPU mining. So finally, we have gotten the date, September 19th. That's probably going to be when the Ethereum will become unminable. But the debt is not final. Things could happen, you know, earlier or slightly later. And it is not like 100% confirmed just yet. It's still, it is still subject to change depending on the upcoming testnet. But one thing for sure is the dev team is very uh, determined to make this happen uh, at least according to their schedule. And we still have like about 50 days before the difficulty bomb will kick in. And during this period of time, you know, after the Grey Glacier update, the difficulty basically stays the same and the network hash rate fluctuating at the same level. A lot of people have given up GPU mining and we can already see that there are really a lot of used GPU that's being uh, flooded into the market and the prices of GPU uh, have been coming down. And if you were to ask me whether or not GPU mining is doomed, in my opinion, it is not just that a lot of things will change entirely. So right now, we still have about less than two months time before Ethereum becomes unminable. So at the time for, for right now, just mine Ethereum, okay, because mo most probably for most GPUs out there, Ethereum is still going to be the most profitable coin to be mined right now at least until maybe the merge right now ethereum is sitting at about 1500 dollars per eth hash so it's still okay compared to about two months ago whereby ethereum prices sits below a thousand dollar per eth so moving on things are going to be very different because ethereum has been the gold standard as far as gpu mining is concerned so once gpu uh ethereum is no longer mineable at least this is what I think would happen. First thing, like within 24 hours or a week of the Ethereum becomes unminable, which means the merge happens, there are going to be a group of people who will try to figure out what is the coin, the most profitable coin to be mined. And a lot of people will be, you know, tinkering things around, monkey around with the overclock settings for different coins. And it's going to be a, in a mess, I believe. So. Later, I'll share with you personally what I will do after Ethereum goes to the merge, but this is what I think things would flow after Ethereum goes to the merge. So for the first short period of time, it could be a couple of days to a week or two, people will start monkeying around with the uh, GPU mineable coins and figure out what are the possibilities remaining in the GPU mining world because the entire network hash rate is going to be distributed across uh, multiple coins that are GPU mineable and that are profitable. So, of course, during this process, it will make a lot of GPU mineable coins to be less profitable or totally not profitable. And those people who would be able to stay are going to be people who have uh, high efficiency when it comes to their GPU performance, as well as people who have cheap power costs and also maybe a bunch of people in the black market who never pay for electricity. So it would take some time for the entire uh, cryptocurrency mining world to expel people who do not have great electricity costs, people who are not profitable and things along those lines. So it will take some time before everything goes to an equilibrium because things work like this. When 
a lot of people mine a single coin, for example, when that coin is deemed to be most profitable, a lot of people mine that coin for that profitability and the difficulty level for that particular coin will go up because more miners join in. And after that, it will become less profitable, less profitable and less profitable and eventually people who cannot uh, make it or people who don't have cheap electricity costs or people who are not efficient again, when it comes to mining that coin, I mean their GPUs are not efficient, then those people will give up mining at least that coin. And when that happens, profitability will slowly improve again. So this is going to be a long process. It can be a couple of months, it can be even a year or two. And when Ethereum is not around for us to mine, I think that, okay, a lot of people would treat GPU mining very differently. Now, in the past, a lot of people, including myself, we do not mind to, you know, mine Ethereum and then hold it for mid to long term because after all, Ethereum is the second largest cryptocurrency in the world. So a lot of people wouldn't mind uh, holding or hodling Ethereum. But when Ethereum becomes unminable, things are going to change not a lot of people, at least at the most uh, generic level, are going to be comfortable to hold coins that are not that familiar to the mass majority. It's like, if you were to compare Fero, Flux, Raven Coin, Ergo, okay, these are the coins that are not popular to the vast majority. Okay, Most probably, if you talk about like Raven Coin or Flux or Fero or Ergo, probably people who are not GPU miners, most of them are not going to be aware that there are these coins around. Those people may be familiar with uh, coins like, you know, Cardano, Solana, okay, and you know, all those like top 20 or top 50 coins. So there are going to be people who mine for the profitability and then immediately sell or sell in, you know, a sh within a short period of time. The amount of people who are willing to huddle the cryptocurrencies that they mine is going to reduce. That's for sure. So at least I foresee this kind of behavior in the near future. So when Ethereum becomes unminable, the profitability of other profitable coins is definitely going to suffer because the entire Ethereum network hash rate, when they move over to other coins, the other networks just are not able to take it. So even if those coins are still going to be profitable after Ethereum moves away, the profitability is going to be very, very low. Look at the cryptocurrency uh, mining profitability right now for GPU mineable coins. They are already quite low. Another thing that I foresee that might happen is going to be mining developers who are actively uh, seeking for solutions to increase profitability because looking at the current profitability right now of other so-called profitable cryptocurrencies to be mined with GPUs, they are nowhere near amazing. They are nowhere near amazing. So when Ethereum moves away, those profitabilities are going to drop another few notches because the entire network hash rate of Ethereum is going to be a lot. So they are going to be mining softwares, you know, developers who will actively look for other possibilities and solution to increase our mining profitabilities. Who knows, okay, we are going to, we probably can dual mine two different coins or, you know, we don't, I, I don't know, because I'm not a mining software developer, but I foresee this to happen to, to sort of uh, help us a little bit, okay, in increasing our profitability and also when they develop something that help the miners, they get more users to use their mining software or miners and they get more uh, revenues or profits as well. Another thing that I personally love and I believe some other cryptocurrency miner would love as well is going to be mining certain cryptocurrencies with GPU in this case that are also stakeable or we can run some kind of like nodes with the cryptocurrency. So meaning that as a GPU miner, we can mine the coins, mine the crypto and then we can do some staking or run some nodes after we have gotten the uh, coin that we mine. So in this regard, we actually mine it and then stake it or run nodes to earn extra passive income. I foresee this could be another trend as well because there are going to be people who don't like 
the fact that okay, we have to figure things out and maybe this week, this coin is going to be more profitable next week, the next uh, most profitable coin is going to change and we have to change settings, you know, uh, on and off and things like that. And I believe okay, a lot of profit switching platforms are going to have some work to be done as well. Things are not going to be that dynamic, especially when Ethereum just moved into the merge. Okay? Uh, new coins are going to come out like recently, Neoxa is very hot. Okay? We might see more cryptocurrencies like Neoxa come out to be, you know, the most profitable on and off and things along those lines. So the next thing is I want to share with you how I personally prepare for GPU mining post merge. So the first thing is I want to make sure my GPU mining rigs are ready for core intensive algorithms like Kapow because these algorithms like the Kapow or Proc Power based algorithm, they produce a lot of heat while mining. So you want to make sure your mining rig or your mining location can handle the heat mining with these algorithms. That's the first thing that at least that's what I do to get myself prepared. Probably going to add fans onto your rigs or just have to find, you know, relocate your rigs and things along those lines so that if the most profitable coin to be mined is like using the Kapow algorithm, at least you can switch without worrying about the heat. So the next is actually understand your power capacity. So here in my office, I know that I'm going to allocate a couple of rigs here, especially those rigs that require extra attention. I've already asked the electrician to come and install extra power socket here in this office and make sure that is the breaker side, okay, the breaker is enough to handle the load. So those are the things that I have already prepared beforehand because who knows, okay, the next coin to be mined or some of the extra features that mining software developers might come out with, okay, will be very taxing when it comes to power consumption and therefore heat. Another thing that intrigued me is learning other things like launching a node or staking those GPU mineable coins just like Flux. So for example, I can mine Flux and then I can use the Flux that I have mined to run a node and also to stake them. So right now, the lowest tier to run a node, I believe, is Cumulus node. You need a thousand Flux and for staking, you need 50 uh, flux minimum to start staking flux and I believe that there is another a lower even lower tier that they will come out is like about five flux at least according to their website but it is still to be uh, determined it's written TBD in their website so these are the things that uh, intrigue me because at, apart from mining those uh, coins I can do more things to earn passive income that is not not being affected by GPU mining profitability. So that's one interesting thing that I like and I hope to see more coins implement these kind of like nodes or staking and things along these lines. So let me share with you what I would do when Ethereum moves to the merge like 24 hours after Ethereum becomes unminable. Honestly speaking, I don't know. Because the moment Ethereum becomes unminable, everything would be in a mess. But one thing that I'm fortunate is that I'm living in a country whereby electricity cost is rather low. It's not the lowest, but it's quite low, coming in at around seven cents US dollar cent. So I do think that I have the luxury to choose whatever coin that I like to mine and just leave it there for a couple of days before I decide and see what are the profitable coins to mine. So probably I'm looking into Flux, okay? I can probably mine Flux for a couple of days while checking what to mine and see what would be the most profitable coin, things along those lines. So I probably will point my rigs to Flux because right now my rigs and my locations are ready to take the heat that are generated by mining Flux. So at least there's one preparation that I have done because in one of my previous video, I mentioned that I could probably okay, move to Ergo first because some of my rigs are not ready to take the heat that might be produced while mining coins that are core intensive, just like Ravencoin and sometimes also Flux depending on your power limit setting. So right now, I think I'm ready and I'm probably going to mine some Flux and see 
what would happen in the GPU mining world and things are going to be the mess. So perhaps I'll just mine Flux and then see what are the pro possible most profitable coin to be mined and determine later and decide later whether or not I'm going to move to those uh, profitable coins. So those are the things that at least I'm telling myself right now. So why not okay, share with us in the comment section below what are you going to do when Ethereum becomes unminable? What are the precautions or what are the preparations that you have already done to welcome, okay, to embrace the end of Ethereum mining? So let us know in the comments below. Everyone is still learning. Let's just share our opinion. So with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you when I see you. Peace.